Animism is found throughout history. It is the idea that there are communities of people around us. Some of them are human, but they all deserve respect. And it is the engagement with these people through practices and reciprocal exchange that is the animism. So this is my slightly adapted uh, version of Graham Harvey's definition of animism. Now, many pagan groups have very fixed ideas of the very distant past. In Scandinavia, we have some rather amazing sources to the pre-Christian past. Uh, notably, there is an entire collection of actual heathen sacred songs or poems, the Poetic Edda. Christianity only attained status as a normative religion in, in Scandinavia at a relatively late state compared to other European areas. But that situation has sort of elevated this pre-Christian period to become almost like this holy grail. These sources, they're very difficult in terms of their source value as representations of the past, uh, but they're also awesome. They're dense with mystique, but also literary quality. You can pick up Snorri's Gulvagidding and you can almost read it to your kids, you know. And this is part of our past that is part of why this past has become this intense cultural element in popular culture, in museums, in productions of identity, in neo-paganism and in scholarship. So the idea of an animist worldview connected to our roots culture has a tendency to become sort of encased or even sort of locked into this idea of that ever so awesome, ever so cool and often ever so sexy Viking Age. This means that animist stuff that doesn't come from the Viking Age is often being rejected, pushed out of our self-understanding as, as valid elements. That is what I've called Viking washing. And I'm going to give you a couple of, of examples of this Viking washing. In the Elder Edda, for instance, uh, there used to be a poem called the Ravnagaldr Odins, which is Odin's raven chant, which was likely composed rather a long time after Christianity became normative in Iceland. But when people figured that out, then this poem got rejected from the tradition. That is Viking washing. Ravnagaldr Odins uh, is typically not found in contemporary publications of Eddic poetry because it is not sort of kind of like Viking enough kind of sort of. There are always debates around these things and perhaps some of the other poems perhaps also aren't all that Viking but we, perhaps we don't talk so much about that. And I think this rejection probably rests on an idea of historicity because it's clearly the same kind of literature just from a later state in history. But if it isn't Viking, then it doesn't belong with what we would like to name Viking poetry from that period that we would like to name the Viking Age. You see, the, the way that, that we impose Vikingness on this literature motivates that some of it is rejected, some of it is pushed to the side. People might also have issues that spring from this weird concept, which is authenticity. Does such a poem actually represent an actual religiosity, or is it just some antiquarian nostalgic reveries in, in some illustrious past? And I think part of the reason that people involved in Viking washing have such a sharp nose for exactly this is that this nostalgic antiquarianism is not so far from their own position, in fact. From an animist position, however, a cultural element like this poem may be an absolutely, like, fully legitimate piece of insight in animist uh, reality. It might not be necessarily be particularly disingenuous, disingenuous or inauthentic, whatever that means, in its relation to a cultural past. Just because it's written a couple of centuries later, humans producing, producing culture mostly build on with reflection on their own past. And ongoing revelation is a fully valid no, mode of traditional knowledge production. This poem may have come into being as an insight or as a revelation that can have been more or less willfully provoked. But I think this kind of Viking washing is actually found throughout 
dealing with the past. Uh, a lot of amazing animist culture is rejected or overlooked because it isn't really Viking enough somehow. You also see, uh, you see it in the dismissing of cultural continuities. People really want to enclose stuff in that Viking age and keep it there. So the fact that shamanic vision quests seem to have been going on in Sweden into the 20th century is not mentioned with a word in seminal scholarly works on the matter of Norse shamanism, in spite of the fact that pre-Christian Nordic shamanism is in the same work works will be liberally compared with Inuit, Native American and Siberian shamanism in order to understand it. Now this is also a kind of Viking washing. The facts that Swedish people have been doing Orskang in, in centuries much clo closer to our own is just sort of ignored or overlooked somehow. And before I started working on the calendar, I was like, what? Why is it totally unknown in popular spaces that there is a runic calendar? Because the runic calendar, well, the reason is that the runic calendar didn't really originate exactly in the Viking Age, so out the window it went. Which has then had the weird effect that people have actually then been inventing runic calendar calendars, seemingly without knowing that an actually tradition of runic reckoning is actually there. It's almost a thousand years old and it seems to build on earlier heathen uh, calendars. Um, it is a system from which an animist perspective is a system for building relation to the cycles of light by beautifully conceptualizing the location of the day as a transforming meaning in relation to these, the, the cycles of the sun and the moon. But it wasn't my king. So let me rather invent something myself. And by the way, you can read more about the runic calendar in my book, The Nordic Animist Year. Another example is uh, my friend Ole Mullervan from uh, Herjadalen uh, in Sweden. He studied bear kinship. And this is also interesting. This bear kinship or totemism it seems to have been a little bit overlooked when it was practiced by Swedish identifying people, but more studied and described when it was practiced by Finn, Finns and Sami. Probably because the, <laughs> because the Swedes were supposed to be these white, well-behaved, well-combed Protestant nationalists, not these kind of ooga-boogas who are drinking the blood of bears and hunting with spears and jumping around with bear masks and all that. All that kind of stuff, that was supposed to be them, the racial inferiors, the Finns and the Sami. They could be like that, you know? And, and some, of this, uh, some, of, some of this bear kinship uh, material from, from uh, Sweden that Ola describes, when he describes it, like it really, you know, it really just make your Viking sensors go like, bleep, 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 you know, it's, it's actually very, very Viking in some ways, but it is out of place. It is outside that Viking age there. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be there, you know, stay there inside the Viking Age, so we can be talking about our illustriously barbarous, ultra-masculine, iconic Viking ancestors. It's not, not supposed to be some sort of kind of our contemporary neighbors. While this distance to our own traditional knowledge, in this case perhaps also serves to uphold the judgment and thereby uh, the oppression of the same kind of knowledge when it belongs to other groups. And that is really Viking washing with a twisted twist, like rejecting the cultural element in order to simultaneously keep it iconic, idealized, while subjecting it to cultural judgmentalism when others are doing it in our own time. <laughs> so Viking washing is really an important image of how uh, the stories that we choose define what material, what kinds of material that we can engage. An important part of my thinking with animism is that it can work as a lens for looking at cultural history in a broader perspective. And thereby we can look behind this idea of white Viking washing that defines how many perceive uh, cultural history. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for enabling this work to go on. See you around.